The year 2019 saw the last day for AP15400 to be produced in the factory. Having replaced by the new model reference 15500, there are upgrades that change the wrist experience too. The 15500 is definitely a more advanced watch with updates that are impressive. But is it also a better watch too? Let's start with the basics. If this is going to be your first Royal Oak, then the cosmetic changes won't even be noticeable to you because they are so minor. But if you already had either between 15300 or 15400, the minor changes are considerable. Subject to your personal taste, they can actually make or break the deal. The hour indices on the new 15500 have been shortened and widened. The new hour indices make the Royal Oak look much more sporty than before, but it is a trade-off on the original looks of Royal Oak that always had thin and long hour markers. The new wider hour markers on 15500 do offer better loom and legibility in the dark. Due to thicker hour markers, the width of luminous material inside the hour markers is now also aligned with the loom on the dial hands. The shortened hour markers allowed the AP logo to go slightly larger too in the new model. The text size for the word Audemars Piguet remains the same but you can see that the logo on the new 15500 is much larger now. The date window on 15400 is one aspect that has divided the opinions. Some collectors consider date window on 15400 being considerably far from dial rim as only a result of limitation from shorter movement fitted inside the case. While others would hold the opinion that the small stick before the date on 15400 maintains its symmetrical looks and overall balance of the dial. The date in the new 155 is pushed out to meet the dial rehot, leaving no room for our marker at 3 o'clock. The date window is also larger and offers a bigger font for the date. Both watches, however, come with the date wheel matching the color of the dial. Another controversial change is the removal of text automatic from the dial, which has divided the opinions. 15400 retains the text automatic at 6 o'clock on the dial, whereas in the new 15500, the text has been removed from the dial. As simple as it sounds, the removal of text does change the experience and feel of the watch face on the wrist. Another difference on the dial is the minute graduations on the dial. In 154, the marking for minute graduations are made on the dial itself. If you look closely, you can see that the painted lines for minute marking are made on the tapestry dial itself. Whereas on 155, there is a minute tracker rim which is mounted outside of the dial and between the dial face and casing rehot. The second scent on the new 155 is also changed and comes with skeletonized counterweight now to reduce its presence and prevent it from blocking the tapestry dial in the background. The second scent also does not taper at all and maintains its width from its bottom all the way to its tip. The second scent on 154 however maintains a more conventional design and has a wider counterweight section and then gradually tapers down to a very thin profile towards its tip. The tapering second hand on 154 not only complements the delicacy of the watch but also the dressier looks as opposed to the skeleton nice hand on 155 which enhances the sporty look. Turning the watches upside down has more stories to uncover with the winner hard to decide. 15400 has had the movement caliber 3120 consisting of 280 parts and 40 jewels packed inside 26.6mm diameter. Caliber 3120 beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, offering 60 hours of power reserve and featuring a 22 carat solid yellow gold rotor that showcases Audemars and Piguet's family's crests. 
155500 on the other hand comes equipped with the all new caliber 4302 consisting of 257 parts and 32 jewels and housed inside 32 mm diameter. Caliber 4302 beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour to offer a 70 hour power reserve. The new movement also features 22 karat cold rotor that is also open worked to offer an unblocking sight to the beautiful machine behind. The new movement is slightly thicker and has resulted in the watch case being about 0.6mm thicker than 154. The number does sound very small but upon wearing both watches on the wrist you do feel the difference and slightly added heft in the case of 155 due to the slightly thicker case. If you are the first time owner, you'd feel no difference whatsoever until the day you'll wear the other one and you'll find out what I mean. Putting my personal thoughts together as an owner of both of the watches in the video, both watches have their own strengths and weaknesses. As much as the new 15500 retains the signature looks of Royal Oak, it actually feels very different. For instance, the bezel is still octagonal but due to shorter hour indices and removal of text, the empty space in the 41mm dial makes the watch look more circular and pushes the looks a little further away from the traditional elements of Royal Oak. However, the shorter hour indices combined with skeletonized seconds hand and bigger date font do make the overall look of the watch more sporty than before. If this is going to be your first Royal Oak and you prefer a more sporty looking watch with cleaner and less cluttered dial that also offers a little more wrist presence than its original size of 41mm, seek a more modern looks in the watch and then love the skeletonized rotor to appreciate the beautiful movement behind then 15500 is the only winner here. But if you prefer more traditional looks, a more balanced and symmetrical dial that also maintains the original looks of Royal Oak with thinner and longer hour indices, prefer a more octagonal looking dial face with seconds hand that's also more traditional rather than modern thinner case with same dimensions of 41mm yet smaller presence on the wrist and a dressier look in the watch. Crave the original looks of Royal Oak from 1971 and then prefer a solid 22 karat yellow gold rotor that also has Audemars and Piguet's family's coat of arms then 15400 is your only bet here. Truth be said, none of these watches are the actual Royal Oaks as was designed by Gerald Jinta. Both watches in question are 41mm and have the seconds hand unlike the original design. And luckily, while the original Jumbo 15202 is still in production, if you really want the traditional Royal Oak, then 39mm is the only way to go. In the absence of Jumbo 15202, 15400 is as closest as you can get. But in the presence of original 15202, a better alternative and contrast in the collection is 15500 for how different it looks. But let me take a moment to appreciate that AP adhered with their boldness to break the tradition with the new 15500. Little details like removing the text automatic, which was there in the Royal Oaks since 1972, and changing the overall dial layout have changed the whole Royal Oak experience now. The pride of the time for the watch being automatic when watch market had seen the biggest decline due to introduction of quartz watches has now been accepted. And even though I personally feel sad on the removal of word automatic, AP decided to modernize the Royal Oaks and change the design to what it is now today. Yet another tradition broken and things will not be the same from this point on. I mean, let's not forget, if AP had never broken the traditions, we wouldn't have seen the Royal Oaks in the first place. And then, without Royal Oaks coming into existence, we wouldn't even have seen the Nautilus or the likes of overseas.